Good morning. My name is Jeff Rogers. Um, my children were victims U and V. I'm a father of four, three of which were marching with me in the parade last November. Two of my children were struck and injured. I also serve as the president of the Waukesha Blazers baseball and fast pitch organization and was a couple, couple months into that job at the time of the parade. I've debated whether or not to read a statement for this sentencing. At the end of the day, I felt it necessary to have my voice heard for my sake, for my family's sake, and for the Waukesha Blazers' sake, and for all the other victims. I'm here today with families that I love, and I'm so sorry that this happened. First of all, this event was completely avoidable, and from my perspective, there has been zero remorse, sympathy, or acknowledgement of the victims by the defendant. All he had to do was stop the vehicle when he saw the crowd, and none of these lives would have been changed forever. For this reason alone, he needs to be locked up for the rest of his life. But enough about him. This is about the impact on, of the event on me, my family, and our Blazers organization. I'd like to speak as a father, first of all. The impact this has had on my family and I has been immense. This last year has been full of confusion, irritation, anxiety, and depression. We haven't been able to live a normal life. The trial has been dragged out and literally we were pulled back through to relive everything, all because this person wouldn't admit it like a man and take what was coming to him. My kids are some of the strongest people I know and they have proven that through the faith in God they've displayed throughout. However, the impact this has had on them literally makes me sick. No more parades, that joy is gone. This is something that will never leave them. I'm still learning things today as well about what they heard and saw that day. I pray every night that God continues to strengthen them to push through and know that he is in control. That night when we got home, I'll never forget Caden looking at me with glassy eyes. He looked up at me and said, I'm really glad Riley is okay, and started to cry. When my wife Stacy sat on the chair next to me that night, it felt different. She hugged me longer than normal and a lot more firm than normal and said, thanks for keeping our kids safe. Everyone saw on the videos that were shown, we're literally inches away from losing three out of our four, four children, and myself included. I thank God each day that he spared us and provided the adrenaline, courage, and strength to get my kids out of the way, gather all the kids we could, and pray together. My wife was going to come with us that night along with our toddler son. I play things in my head over and over, imagining what could have been if she would have come. Where would she have been standing when that SUV barreled through? I have flashbacks most days to Maya's jacket slipping through my hand. If I wouldn't have grabbed it the second time, I know what the outcome would have been. Riley still has trouble sleeping with some nights getting out of bed six, seven, eight, nine times because she heard a noise or doesn't feel safe. A few days ago, I was one-on-one -on -one in the car with her and I finally apologized for not finding her right away. Thank God our friend found her and kept her safe, but as her dad, I've lived with the fact that I couldn't find all my kids that night after it happened. I went way too long not knowing where my kids were, with panic overwhelming me. As a father, I can confidently say that this incident had a year-long impossible impact on me and our family. Are we managing? Yes, of course, as God is in control. Now to speak as the Blazers president. This was a happy gathering and almost a kickoff of my presidency with the Blazers since I was only a couple months in. We are getting to know each other, welcoming a new coach, our new board members, and overall just ready to advertise our Blazers program. Looking back at the pictures from prior to the tragedy, we are so happy. So much love and camaraderie. We are ready for an awesome season. I spoke just prior about my perspective during the event as a father of three kids, but as the president of our organization, the weight of the moment to find an account for everyone felt like it was on my shoulders. We had nearly 35 people there. I knew I had lots of help, and for that I can't thank the other parents and coaches enough. The moment was a blur, and gathering and putting kids up in the truck was the priority. From there, the kids I could find huddled with me in the theater and we said a prayer for those injured and being attended to. I knew that the next few days were going to be intense, but I never fully grasped how crazy the following days, weeks, and months would be. The amount of turmoil and struggle for our Blazers organization was literally insurmountable. From the moment of the incident, the amount of media and law enforcement interaction was exhausting and unending. Media showing up at my door asking for individual participants' status, unbeknownst to them that two of my children were hurt. There was nonstop email flow, phone calls, planning, coordinating, and filtering through things. It was endless work. This job went from something I truly loved from my biggest passion in life to something I cried about for months. I went from giving speeches on Facebook Live about how cool our new indoor facility was to speaking at Jackson's funeral. From there, the community really pulled together. The amount of love and compassion that came our way was also unending. It was honestly overwhelming. For that, we cannot thank this community enough. 
Finally, I wanted to briefly touch on the true impact this has had on me. My faith was challenged over the past year, but I can confidently say it's stronger than ever. The hardest part about the whole incident was not knowing where my kids were, not having answers for what just happened, not knowing if more danger was coming. I knew I had Maya next to me, but when I went back and forth screaming for Caden and Riley, that horror plagues me every day. I go back to those moments quite often, and when I watched the videos during the trial, it brought back all those feelings. Pure and utter terror, that's what it was, and that's the impact it still has today. Finally, in closing, I'm a man of faith and wanted to share two Bible passages which have pushed me through. First of all, my confirmation passage, Joshua 1.9, it reads, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And secondly, I met with my pastor prior to testifying, and he provided me with an excellent part of scripture. Philippians 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understandings, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you for listening, and may God strengthen us all. Thank you, sir.